Mona, I need your help. What's it pay? Uh, hold on. I can't hear you. Are you breaking up? Oh, oh. So will you make some games for me or what? Hey, Ashley. That, oh, okay, I'll call you back. WarioWare Gold is out now on 3DS. And with over 300 micro games packed in, it serves as a great way to revisit the series' 15 year history, one that's full of clever innovation. Its smart use of Nintendo technology has made it the perfect guinea pig for new and creative ideas. Through eight games across almost as many platforms, Wario has always been on the cutting edge of Nintendo's new technologies. Let's rewind. The year was 2003. The Governator was elected in California, Apple launched iTunes, and we got our fifth Mario Party. That year, Nintendo also launched WarioWare Mega Micro Games on the Game Boy Advance. At that time, the Game Boy Advance was the place to play critically acclaimed but time-consuming RPGs like Golden Sun, Fire Emblem, and Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. Then, Wario came crashing in on his motorbike with this collection of mini-games. But the word mini doesn't even quite fit, hence the new term micro games, coined by the dev team in Nintendo R&D 1. It's a concept you can understand pretty much immediately. In just a few seconds, you get a command and a scenario and have to figure out what to do, often timing just a single button press. Add a dash of meme-worthy humor like nose picking or smiling food, and you've got yourself a recipe you can enjoy over and over again making the simple games not so repetitive. But Wario wasn't the only mascot for the series. Ninevolt is an audience stand-in for Nintendo fans. His collection of micro games serves as a nostalgia trip for kids of the NES and Super NES eras, remixing classics like Legend of Zelda and Super Mario Bros. into rapid-fire challenges. Sounds a lot like NES Remix on the Wii U, right? Nintendo played off that nostalgia first with WarioWare, and would do it again a year later with the classic NES series, which ported first-generation Nintendo games to the GBA, the very games that had their first comeback in WarioWare. Just one year later, we would get WarioWare Twisted. The crazy innovation this time was a cartridge with a built-in gyro sensor, which meant you had to complete many of the games using simple motion controls. This was two full years before the Wii brought motion controls to the living room. Twisted was certainly inspired by Kirby Tilt and Tumble, and that did predate WarioWare by a few years, but Wario did punt the little pink puffball out of the way when we came around with an innovative launch game. As Nintendo was wont to do with its first party games, WarioWare's smooth moves demonstrated the full potential of the technology, with over 20 different uses of the Wiimote across its mini games. There was the typical sword slashing and pointing, sure. But smooth moves mix things up with more creative poses like holding the remote above your head, rotating in your palm like a joystick, or even completely discarding it, only to quickly draw it a moment later. That quick draw would be featured again when a certain Switch launch game came around. 1-2 Switch features many of those same motion configurations and takes things to the next level with new technology like the Joy-Cons HD Rumble. But the WarioWare influence is clear in the gameplay, humor, and even the art style. Whether it was motion control at home or on the go, WarioWare showed Nintendo fans the possibilities. That wasn't Wario's only launch game either. WarioWare Touched came alongside the DS, and as you'd expect, it once again showed off what Nintendo's tech could do. Minigames capitalized on the touchscreen with taps, drags, rubs, and all other manner of stylus control. Touchscreen gaming continued to be a Nintendo staple through the 3DS, Wii U, and now Switch, but the DS did it first, and WarioWare proved it could work. Wario's final outing on the DS continued to innovate. WarioWare DIY tells you pretty much everything you need to know in the title. You can make your own micro games, music, and comics. The level of customization here was unrivaled by any other Nintendo game at the time, and it wouldn't be matched until a full six years later when Super Mario Maker graced the Wii U. And now, a full nine years after DIY, you can look at Labo's Toy-Con Garage and still see Nintendo capitalizing on the creativity of its fans, with a game where you're only limited by your own imagination. It's a fantastic concept that WarioWare first brought to the workshop. Over these last 15 years, games in the vein of WarioWare have certainly come around, 
Frobisher says and Work Time Fun had their 15 minutes of fame, and WarioWare designer Kazuyoshi Osawa went on to create Rhythm 10 Goku, an amazing rhythm series that found success in its own niche. Now, it's 2018. Nintendo still capitalizes on nostalgia with the likes of the NES Classic, the Switch still makes smart use of touch and motion controls, and through it all, WarioWare is still here, offering the same goofy microgames it brought to the table 15 years ago. And it's still the antithesis of those 100 hour long RPGs and open world adventures in today's video game scene. In the time it'll take you to get through The Witcher 3's introductory chapter, you can finish the entire critical path of mega micro games. So if you've never experienced the joy of the WarioWare series, I'd encourage you to try it out. It'll only take a few seconds for Wario and his pals to charm their way into your heart.